to get Luma out off stage and hey, look, Olin Gunnar off stage. That's where we are. But you know, get Luma off stage and uh, away from Rosalina, and the match has already begun. See, already Luma's gone, but that doesn't mean that the match is over yet, because uh, I think they buffed it again. L Luma comes back in 13 seconds, and it didn't take long for him, long for Luma to come back right there. Uh, playing some good footsies. The damage is still so small, and see that small down tilt. It doesn't matter if shield Luma's gone, and uh, Ham really knows how to you know, abuse that situation. And Rosalima, of course, loses a lot of kill power and a lot of damage power when Lu Luma's gone, so... Oh, and Luma's back again. Maybe we should try and count how long it takes next time Luma gets killed, because I'm sure that it will happen again. Oh, almost went there. Uh, yeah, Falcon, I don't, I'm not sure if he still has the spiky effect in his side B. Essentially, this seems uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Rosaluma, Rosalina and Luma are pretty light. At least they used to be, and they probably still are, so... Oh. I would believe that the situation is pretty close, uh, but of course, Falco also being quite light and getting knocked up right there. So let's count together. It gets destroyed at 28 seconds left, 5 minutes 28. And Luma will appear back soon. I'm guessing around at 5.15 left in the match. No, even sooner. Wow, that looks like 10 seconds, actually. That's very fast. 10 or 11 seconds and already gets Luma back. That's distress, distressing it, to say the least, at least. Uh, wow. And Luma should be back right about now. Yep, that's just over 10 seconds. Probably 11 or 12 seconds. That's a gr pretty great for Rosalina and Luma. And that's still not the first kill because Rosalina has such an amazing recovery. Can come far, come back from far away, but doesn't have a hitbox, so it's really no risk trying to edge guard it. And well, as always, when you throw Rosalina, you always have to be ready to shield afterwards, because otherwise Luma's gonna get some good hits on you. Unless they're desynced, in which case, uh, he might get hits on Luma might get hits on you even before you had the time to shield. It seems like uh, Ham is a bit on the back foot right now, doing his best to try and make up the difference after the first stock. Ooh, that hit did not do anything to Luma. He completely skipped him or something. The uh, knockback Luma takes is sometimes quite uh, weird. You're n sometimes not quite able to tell how much knockback something should do to, him, uh, to Luma or how much it will. Oh, and there we see, of course, uh, Wilson using uh, Rosalina's uh, gravity, for gravity pull, uh, making projectiles kind of a mute point against her. Ah, and dropping shield at the right, exactly the wrong moment. And now the difference is quite huge. Uh, a whole stock and 34% and that 34% is nothing as we see it being racked up already and ham already at equal percent with the entire stock behind. Um, oh wow. And uh, there we see Wilson getting in the desync, making separating himself and Luma, not the desync, but separating himself and Luma so that they can cover a wider area, a wider range so to say. Yep, Ham is definitely on the back foot. Of course, uh, Luma be uh, Rosalina being so floaty gives her the chance of uh, jump using her second secondary jump. Oh my! Oh my! Use her secondary jump and uh, up air there. Rosalina is pretty safe on you know. I can can try and be very safe on her recovery, but the recovery move itself does not have any hitboxes, so. It still says, you know, quite easy to try and edge guard. And now we're going to do some stage bands and chase shoes. We're going to a battlefield, but we don't know with which background. I mean, backgrounds are important. No, we might actually be going to do actual Skyloft, because that's legal here without hazards. It's quite a good stage, actually. 
sure you can go to the bottom of the stage, but otherwise it's a very you know serviceable stage. No walk-offs or anything. But we end up going to town and city. Uh, Omega version, I mean, uh, not Omega version, uh, no hazards version, so no moving platforms. Oh, no, wait, Town and City does have moving platforms in, uh, no, without hazards, but there are a lot. Oh, well, the platforms just come and go, but they don't move around much. I'm not quite sure, we will see in a moment. Yep, we have uh, platform to stay still. And they're kind of in a reverse triplat. You know, the usual triplat that we see in Battlefield. Except reversed. And that's already bye bye to. Uh... Wow, wait. I didn't even realize because I was thinking about the stage so much. But Ham here going with Simon Belmont. Oh, and Simon Belmont getting kind of kind of counter in this match with thanks to a gravitational pull. I mean, uh, what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when you, half your tactic is uh, throwing around projectiles and uh, Rosalina just says, "Nah, I don't wanna." Well, that means you just have to use your projectiles spar uh, sparingly. Oh my! And of course, Rosalina can use that gravitational pull to grab the items herself. Has happened just now with uh, Simon Belmont. Uh, holy fire! That, of course, is an item that you can grab yourself even without gravitational pull. You can just shield it and then grab it out of the air with, uh, while showing out an attack. It's a very effective tactic and, uh, well, it's quite difficult to pull off, but if you do manage to pull off, it can lead some very good situations for you. Simon in this situation seems to be a bit worse off with uh, dealing with Luma, but it doesn't mean that... Oh my! Destroying the shield. Oh no! Oh no, shield broken, but still able to control Luma. That is, that is just unsatisfying, I would say. Unsatisfying, yeah. <laughs> oh my, and uh, Belmont's, of course, not having very good recovery. Uh, the, side B, uh, the side aerials can be used as tether recoveries, but otherwise, nothing that's amazing. Ham really needs to get this uh, get this stock over in an instant, otherwise bad things will happen. You'll be left behind more than a stock and with too big too big of a deficit to make up. These matches still being only best of three or first to two are you know you really need to make your worst uh, make it worthy when you choose a counter pick character. Of course, Simon having the advantage of having such long attacks. Ouch, not good, not good. Ouch. Of having such long attacks that can also hit Luma through the shield of Rosalina. Rosalina just really going in for a juggle there. Simon can't really get much done in that sense. Oh no, and it's still too far for the tether grab, for the tether recovery from the side aerial. That is just unfortunate. Now, what do we see going on here? Just trying to get some edge guard situations going. The situation doesn't seem very good for Ham. But he's still doing his very best. Still, uh, especially with Simon, I think you see uh, Ham going out more, going off stage more, maybe throwing that uh, down air of his that you know reached also pretty, pretty extremely far. And damn, that's just it. Two nil, two nothing. But hey, that's what happens in brackets for you. We'll see Ham in losers brackets next. Ah, that's a shame. 
Uh, but hey, next up, coming on stream, we hopefully have some more bracket matches coming. Uh, let's see the situation going on other where, other where, elsewhere. Murusu has beaten Cheetah and is waiting for Wilson. Oh, it's going to be Murusu and Wilson going on, going on in winners next, which is quite interesting. House beats Flamesy, and we're waiting for the winner of Pepe and Salavitz. Uh, both Pepe and Salavitz made it to, I think, at least... At least, uh, well, Salavitz made it all the way to top three of uh, doubles in Ultimate, and Pepe made it to, I think, top... Uh, at least in top nine. Then we have Burki and Rickshaw going on somewhere, and that's bound to be a hell of a match. Both of them actually faced off... They don't... They, yeah, they faced off in doubles as well in the top four. Uh, Puck and M1, uh, I, uh, M1, my broadcast colleague, I hope him the best. And then Maksu, the amazing versus Raptori. I would uh, have to put that game maybe to Maksu, but don't don't quote me on that. Don't tell Raptori I said that. Uh, then we have an interesting man match with Nokis and Critical. No clue how that could go. I'm not even sure exactly which characters the, both of them are playing. Nokis was playing earlier. You saw him playing Money Match, perhaps. And uh, that was going pretty well for him. He was using Incineroar. And Critical, I'm not quite sure what she's using right now. Lancelot already beat Adeit 2-0. Uh, and then Mayhem versus Mukluk is happening somewhere. That's going to be an interesting ma match. Mayhem finished second in his pool, pool number one. And then Imi already beat Yake. Imi, who was in uh, uh, Losers Finals. Yeah, Losers Finals in uh, doubles. So that's someone with lots of prospects. Huffware and Super Rudolph. Don't know how that's going. Oh, and we just see that Schwa from Smash Finland has beat Donut. That happens. Donza was also in pool number one, but uh, yep. Then we have Yaxi versus Wormy. Uh, I'm actually not sure how that match is going to go out. I haven't seen Yaxi play for a for a while. Uh, he he moved out of town and didn't see him play Smash Four for a while. But he's here tonight, and it's amazing. And he used to be a very good player, so I'm sure he's probably still a very good player. And then last we see Kaoru versus Rota, and that's bound to be an interesting match. Both very proficient players of Smash, Smash 4 mainly, uh, probably both of them dabbled in melee somewhat as well. And in the last br uh, first round match of brackets, we had Edvardi and Ode. Edvardi coming with the win. So, I hope that we can get a match on stream soon. Uh, and uh, we'll be ready to show you more of that then. Uh, in the meantime, I'll go and try and find us one of those matches. See you soon.
And we are back. Coming at you with some new content. Smash content. 